would you say, Mike, that, you know, and you mentioned once once Pete and Roy sort of opened your world a little bit, the decision to quit the band, I mean, who, who knows where Simon Says would have ended up, but sure. um, <clears throat> that certainly, to me, seems like a pretty honest decision. I mean, faced you know, here it is, you've got a record deal, you're not even looking for one, you've got one. Right. And now I'm going to go and, and I don't know, teach and do something perhaps, I mean, was was the net even viable at that point? So for you, how hard was that decision to, to give that up? Yeah, it was really hard because we actually had a third album coming up and at that time in the industry when every time you got you started a new album you got an advance right. and we because of our management and our management's past we had a very very large record deal so our advance was like really the kind of thing that's like okay that's the next 10 years of my in- income is that advance and so I literally had to decide do I quit the band right now before that happens or do I go into this next album knowing that my heart's not in it and I'm obsessed with teaching and then have to live with the guilt? So, yeah, so I, I gave up the money. And, I mean, there was no Mike's Lessons. There was, I honestly, I don't even think Simon Says ever even had a website. That's how new the internet was publicly. Right. Um, so, you know, it wasn't even a forethought. It was like, I will teach private drum lessons in a music store for the rest of my life. I will have, you know a car that gets me to work sometimes but I'll live close enough that in case it doesn't I ride my bike right. and and I'll have a one bedroom apartment and I'll be happy man cuz I'll be teaching drums and I just just like Pete and Roy said when I explain something to somebody I, I dude that is that is my version of playing to 100,000 people I get chills I get all excited I have to leave the room because I get a little misty eyed. I'm like, just keep practicing Billy I'll be back and so uh, you know and that I, so I knew I'd be happy, but it was it was hard because I was I was 26 when that happened. Yeah. So it's like, man, I don't. <laughs> this is scary, but that's why guys like Pete and Roy are so important because they've done it and they gave me that vibe of like, look, you're not gonna die. You know, yeah. it's like you may miss out on this, you may think this was the wrong choice, but I'm telling you from somebody that's been there and done that, there's something different about you when you teach compared yeah. to when you play. And uh, I was like, wow, man. And I started realizing in my, in my playing, in my past, everything I've ever learned was never for me. It was always so I could explain it to someone else. Even when I was like 16, I would learn something out of Future Sounds and I would run to school the next day and be like, dude, have you guys ever thought about doing this? And if you popped every third accent, it would create this rolling polyrhythm that goes over the bar line. And, you know, I mean, that's everything I've ever learned was always so I could show it to someone else. And it's like, okay. That's weird. Yeah, <laughs> not normal. So, um, so and so now that you you know Mike's lessons has been a huge success. Um, I remember watching YouTube drum lab videos, and wow. this this guy with a microphone and DW had just sent you a kit, and you were like super pumped, and you're like, <laughs> it was it was starting to catch on, and I have to admit there was definitely something, even though there was other videos that were maybe you know, better production, it was like, sure. there was something about you, and it was, it was maybe a clarity in the teaching style, so moving forward now, that Mike's Lessons, uh, has, has it, has it realized its potential, or where is it headed? No, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely become, I mean, you know, I'm actually here now, like, at right. Mike's yeah. Lessons, like, I mean, like that's my kit awesome. and there's cameras like and I mean so Mike's lessons is like a physical building now so yeah I mean that's something I never planned on I mean it was supposed to always be run out of the spare bedroom of mine and my wife's house so you know as far as where it's going um, you know I think being more clear my my big business step for 2014 is being more clear to the public okay. on what I actually do because it can be a little cloudy sometimes, and I need to actually clean it up because I want I want it to be very clear that my YouTube videos are tips and tricks. These are things I don't feel comfortable charging for. They're fun, but 
you know, showing you a lick that will get you fired in your next gig, I can't charge you for that. Right? That's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's But bad. I understand that as drummers, we dig it, you yeah. know? Like, there's always the responsible music side of what we do, and then there's the fireworks side of just like, look, I dig the drum set. So that's what YouTube is for. That's my outlet, and it's my way to give back to the people that gave me a career in the first place. Right. And then the pre-recorded lessons are going to stop being... There won't be a lot of personal stuff to them. I want them to be very, very like an encyclopedia. Like, if you type in Samba, you get the Samba. It's me teaching you the Samba in under five minutes, and you can do it. And then the live lessons is where, okay, well, if I'm teaching the Samba in the live lessons, I have a half hour for us to explore the music of Brazil, explore how did that music make its way to America. Okay. Let's talk about the variations I play. So I want to make sure that there's three separate entities. Like, you know, I imagine the drummer on his way to a gig in a studio and they said, yeah, we're going to, you know, we got a couple Samba tracks and then one's going to be, you know, a little bio thing. And he's like, okay, cool. Hangs up the phone. And he's like, what the hell is a bio? And he can go on Mike's lessons, download it immediately, watch it, you know, in the parking lot and walk in and play it. And it's good. It's like, okay, well, that's what my iPod lessons are for. Yeah. But then if he was like, man, I wonder how the bio is related to Samba and Bossa Nova since they're all from Brazil. Right. Well, that's what the live lessons are for. Let's talk about that. Right. Um, and get into it. So, yeah, so I think 2014 is more about clarity and dividing my three things up of YouTube, iPod lessons, and live lessons so people know why do you make all three of these? And say, like, well, they're, they're actually very different even though they're always educational. Right. And then the other thing is, I have a few people that are really close to me in my life that know how overly emotional I am about teaching and people getting better, and I want to let a little bit more of that show through in my video content. Um, I'm kind of a, a, a wise-ass funny guy sometimes, right. but it's like, man, I mean, dude, if, if, if you were sitting in front of me right now and we were struggling with something that you were working on, and then... I was able to find the one thing that allowed you to break through, you right. know, and you were just we're getting it, and then I came up with the one analogy that clicked for you, and it worked. If I was in the room for that, I would honestly get kind of choked up, right. you know. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, uh, Mike. When when you were growing up, um, you grew up in California your entire life. Yep. Um, what did your parents do for a living? Um, dad was like kind of like the tra traveling sales guy. Um, so he was also a hell's angel. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whoa. So I'm the opposite uh, of my dad. Uh, and uh, Your dad was a hell's angel? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you know. And when you're a kid, you don't really know what that is. No. But, uh, I remember just seeing like, I'd see like a mark on his arm and I'd be like, what's that, dad? And he's like, it's 22. I'm like, what's a 22, Dad? And he's like, it's a pea shooter. And I'm like, I, and I'm, and he's just telling me these things like, in his cryptic way, he's telling me, oh, I got shot last night, son. Uh, but it's okay because it was just a 22. And when he put it at my head, I put my arm up. He shot through my arm, and then I fixed the situation. Wow. And I'm like six, like, oh, Dad got shot with a pea shooter. I don't know what that is, you know. So, uh, so yeah, that was that was pops. <laughs> and uh, wow. but he, you know, um, he stopped all of that when I was about 15 and he left San Francisco. He lived in San Francisco about two hours from where I live. And he, um, he just decided, you know, I want to be a part of your life. I don't want to do this anymore. So he would take me to like a couple of you know, the meetings and, you know, you're never kind of all the way out, but they, they respected where he was going to go in his life. And, uh, and, and I mean, you know, it was fine. It was, you know, it wasn't like Crips and Bloods. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, they would all let me know if you need anything, we got your back type thing. And I was like, dude, I'm like really metrosexual. <laughs> I'm not going to need your help for anything. Like, I'm never going to be in a fight. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, dad, it was so cool. Like, he was always so proud of me, even though I was the weird one in the family. Our, our family's all, they're just all badasses on his side. They're all, you know, like war heroes. And my cousins all went to Annapolis. And Wow cars and you're a man you know and I was like the kid with the bleached hair and the earrings and just the drummer you know and like oh I says well I'll get pink blue pink blue rubber bands you know I was just like the freak and, the, and it was so cool that he never was embarrassed of me he was always so proud yeah. and uh, that was really cool so when I was like uh, 17 you know that's when he kind of said look 
I can't afford to send you to college. Mom can't afford to send you to college. So you have two choices, military. Um, and I, and he knew right away. It's like, mm, I'm not that guy. I, I mean, my whole family's military, so I respect military on yeah. a high level, but I'm not the guy to go. <clears throat> um, and he's like, or, you know, get a scholarship, you know, to Berkeley or wherever um, and do the drum thing. And so I said, well, I don't know. I don't know where I want to go to college, but I want to play drums. And so anyways, he kind of sat me down. And he said, look, here's the deal. Next year, you're going to be 18 and you have to, by that time, be making a living with nothing but the drums. And so he's like, I don't care if you tune them, tech them, build them, sell them, whatever, but drums need to pay for your life if I'm going to go to bat for you with grandma, grandpa, wow. my brothers, and everybody, because they're going to ask, what, what is Michael doing with his life? And if, if, if I'm going to go to bat for you, you have to be making it work. So that was that. I mean, I, that was my senior year in high school. And uh, by the time I, you know, I was teaching at a music store called Drum and Guitar City, I was also working retail and then I was gigging and then session work in Sacramento to so I was, I was paying the bills car apartment and insurance all with drums you know I was eating top ramen but <laughs> it was you know <clears throat> asking for handouts from my mom and dad and then my mom was a real estate agent so um, I was always being taken around to homes uh, lavish homes and learning about interior design it's probably where my metrosexual side comes from right, and right. <laughs> bedroom that you're in right now and redecorate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's anything off Craigslist I can find. Uh. <laughs> That's where, uh, so that was, you know, my mom, uh, and she was, I lived with my mom more than my dad, so she was very, she was the one that always paid for the lessons and right. very, very supportive of everything I did with drums. Um, yeah. was, you know, it was definitely never, I never got that thing from her or my dad of which I think too many kids get, which is, when are you going to get serious? When are you going to get a real job? And it's like, look, this is a real job. It may not pay what you think a, a real job pays, but you know, when I look back on what you and myself have put into drumming, you know, financially, I've paid as much as any doctor has for my schooling. Absolutely. In private drum lessons from the time I was five years old until right now, I'm still taking lessons with Will Kennedy. So. Oh wow. So it's like, okay, well, I deserve to make a living. I've put in the money. My parents have sacrificed everything so I could make noise. And so, you know, when people are like, dude, you're so lucky. And I'm like, lucky? <laughs> like, dude, I've done everything that a chiropractor did. You know, I've done everything that, you know, I've trained my whole life for this. Yeah. We all have. So I think that, like, you know, I don't mind people saying that I'm blessed or something, but don't call it luck. No. Like, you know, so... I didn't mean to go off on a tangent there, but no, uh, that was that was incredible. Lot to make sure that I had the opportunity to change my dreams. So, um, and you make a really good point, Mike, and it's something that I, I, even to this day I struggle with a lot. I mean, a, a lot of the Black Page is is funded by me. Um, I work a job and play at night, and sometimes there's you know 16, 18 hour days. Um, it's tough, but the one thing, and it, I, I guess it's validating hearing it from yourself, is that is it is a job. It's it's, oh, yeah. and it's more than a job. It's a passion. It's a it's a pursuit of happiness. Um, if you could say anything to another little Mike, right? About you know, because we hear so much in this world, you know, well, you just you got to get a job. You got to get a job. And I mean, one of my biggest mentors, Dom Famulero. I mean, he stated, you know, when he was 10 years old, I'm going to play drums for a living, and I'm not even going to be in a band. Um, right. You know, and I, I just, what what advice could you give kids to, not necessarily, I'm not taking away from working for a living, but... Oh, no, yeah. What What is this belief that we have to work, that you can't just play? Um, it's crap. Right. It's crap. No, it is, and it's it's very different in other countries. You know, in other countries, the second you've decided that you have a passion for something, they move you to that school. You know, yeah. there's a lot of European countries that it's like they have the music high school, right? Not not just you're in band one period out of the day. You know, yeah. you're always surrounded with like-minded people. So I think I think it's just 
kind of opening up the dream a little is, is, is seems to be the problem. Because when I speak, to, I mean, I have, you know, students, of course. And so when I'm talking to a 17-year-old, I'm like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I'm going to be a touring drummer. And it's like, oh, well, that's very specific. Yeah. You are, you are shooting for the stars on something that is based on luck and timing. Right. You need to open up that dream. What is the real dream? And the real dream is usually like, Man, if I could just smell the inside of rack toms on a daily basis yeah. and get that maple in my in my nasal passages, <laughs> life would be good. And it's like, okay, well then if that's the case, then you can totally do this, you know? Yeah. You get a job at your local music store for minimum wage and you're tuning and teching drums all day and selling them and you're learning more about the product. And by being at that store, you have, you know, technically an endorsement. Everything's fifty percent off for yeah. you. So that's bad. So you're now making money at the place that you were going to spend your money anyways. Exactly. Then, you know, you start pick, getting, like, pickup gigs where it's like, oh, jazz sucks. And it's like, well, dude, jazz pays. Yeah. You might want to learn a waltz, you know, and 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 you might want to make $125 on Friday nights playing the wedding, you know. If you do that every Friday night, that's, you know, that's 600 bucks. Um, what did I say, 125 or yeah. 150 <laughs> 125 Okay, well then that's five hundred bucks. <laughs> but so just, I think it's just collecting. I, I don't. I think it's very hard to make a living in one specific thing unless you're really good at it. Right. I mean, unless you're obsessively good at it. And if you if you really think about it, it's like I don't make any money really playing the drums because I'm actually not that great at the drums compared to like a you know, uh, a Virgil Donati or something. I make money because I'm obsessed with giving education. You know, I'm obsessed with teaching. So, you know, I mean, Mike'sLessons.com, you cannot buy a video of me playing drum set. You can only buy videos of me explaining things. Um, so I don't make any money playing. I make money explaining. So, but when I was trying to make a living as a drummer, I worked at a music store. I taught at a music store. I teched at our local studios like, hey, man, Every drum recording that comes out of here is reflective on you, Mr. Producer. You should bring me in before you ever start a session, and I will tune those drums and get them sounding exactly how you want for that genre of music, and your studio will look better because of it, and I'll just do it for 50 bucks. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing it three times a week, but I'm also doing the sound check, and I'm playing some deep pockets where they're like, dude, are you free on Saturday to do a session? It's like, yes. So it's like, you know, it's just those things where it's like, man, just outsmart the system. You know, because yeah. you can't control, like, I can't control how good I am at the drums as far as talent level. I, I have what I have, and I'll try to get better every day, but I know that I can outwork somebody. I can control that. Like, when when drummer X and drummer Y go to sleep, I can stay up and learn more and soak up more and push harder and learn more about social media and anything to build my brand. So I think that that's kind of the key is, like, having young drummers not get upset about the people around them being better, because it's like, dude... You're, you're not really better. You're just where I'll be in two years if I keep practicing. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Mike, <clears throat> I want to thank you. Uh, wow, you're a humbling guy. Um, I mean, it's incredible. I'm so glad that I called you to do the interview. Um, Dude, I, it's an honor, man. And I, I never thought that I'd, uh, you know, get the call for the black page. Like, when Amber, you know, it's like, really? That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, then I had to explain or everything about what the black page was and it, it was it was good but uh by the way did i just about 10 minutes ago flip you off as i you, know, you make me cry you might I have I, I think that's like my, my first ever flip off on camera so i i apologize to all of you that are watching yeah i'm a very even keeled guy yeah. but this man made me cry because i was thinking about him achieving something and uh, getting flipped off. <clears throat> black page readers Please do yourself a favor. Um, visit mikeslessons.com, uh, Mike's YouTube channel. It's the Drum Lab. Again, tips and tricks. You can sign up for Mike's website through the website. Uh, any problems, questions, uh, talk to Amber. Um, and if you like this interview, aside from the flipping off, <laughs> uh, just Google plus one, uh, Facebook like. Uh, of course, head over to Mike's Facebook page like that. Uh, tweet, Twitter, whatever you want. And, All that. Yeah. And um, yes, absolutely. With regard to Roy Burns and Aquarian, um, both of us highly suggest Roy's the last of a dying breed. 
and what he has to say needs to be told and I think Mike you're you're the guy to, to take that into the next generation so namaste thank you I, I appreciate that brother